Rocky's group. Look at that. That's awesome. I don't even have to be here. Hey, hey. You all up and running, uh, Derek? Sweet. Have you ever used VNC before? Aha. Uh -huh. So this has a VNC view, uh, server on it. So you can, uh, it should be installed on there. You should be able to bring up VNC and just uh, remote log into here. And then what you can do is in Streamlabs, you can show the different uh, scenes. There's scenes. I think they're in here. Uh, should be probably tight VNC. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, viewer. Yeah, there you go. And then if you go to Streamlabs, uh, there's these scenes. So if you click on those, then as long as you have a VNC window up, it should show it. Yeah, try to connect. Uh, 215, authentication failure, try room 215, hmm. oh, there we go, so now there's probably, yeah, click on, oh, there you go, and then so like if I'm standing right there pointing to the screen, then you can see the see the context of what we're talking about, and the person can actually see the video. So you have to show you have to show that to uh, Ryan too, because we kind of have like the two-headed monster here. So if one of you's out sick or something, okay, through grace. Yeah. The only problem with that is that You're taking away all the excuses. I am. <laughs> well, the only thing with that is somebody would have to be here just in case like the camera needs adjustment yeah. or the mic or But I was talking to um, Paul Sturgeon. He leads a Tuesday life group um, Tuesday evening. And what I want to do hopefully in the new year, is I want to promote, I don't know how to put it yet, but like off Sunday morning life groups. So promote the Tuesday group, promote the online life group. Or I guess, I don't know what to call it yet, but the kind of the alternative ways to attend life group. I don't know. I don't know how to phrase it yet. So if you guys have any brilliant ideas, I'm all ears. Without any negative connotations. Cool, you know, yeah, that's I, I, can't remember, I can't remember what ours was called. There was, it was 
different reasons why you would be there, but it all came down to you were clearly yeah. not yeah. going to be graduating at the normal school, and, the, and by normal, just the traditional school. That like they knew you were capable, but you weren't yeah. uh, applying yourself or yeah. something like that. They would give you extra help with yeah. that. Or have behavioral issues. Or behavioral, yeah. yeah. Did we carry that over for you, Josh, or you got it? <laughs> I think I got it, yeah. I, just making sure, because oh, yeah, the thanks. scooter's probably a pain. It is a little bit. Yeah, we had kids that like, you know, some kids just weren't motivated and their parents weren't there to motivate them. And so they, they had trouble. Other kids had drug issues. We know isn't what you want this. Yeah. I don't know if now's a good time or if you have something. So we're just going to watch some MMA today. So just... Well, and we're going to talk about the chickens. So you can thank uh, you can thank John Lute for this video because uh, I texted him this morning and I was like, "Hey, John, you, do you have any good videos of like Brazilian jiu-jitsu like submission?" And he was like, "Oh, okay." So he sent me this. Apparently, this is. Marcelo Garcia, and you know, he is the best grappler in the world. You know how I know that? Says that right there. That's how I know. So, apparently, this guy is, is the best grappler in the world. Well, that's true, and it's from a reliable source that we know. So, I'm assuming that John knows the best grappler in the world. Separate the coop. So I'm coming in there. I'm separating you all. You guys are not. <laughs> so how many chickens do you have? That's right. How you doing, man? Good seeing you. Hanging in there? Yeah. Definitely. I'm ready. I feel like I want to walk on this thing. I'm so bad now. Yeah? Yeah? Get your independence back? Yeah, but I got to listen to the doctor. Yeah. You got to submit to the doctor. Yeah. How far off of these did you watch? Um, I go the 28th for a checkup again. And we'll see if I can start. Hey, Mr. Carl. Good morning. Thank you. Are you gonna? Are you do? Do you have to do like PT and stuff?
you figure out a way to get out. So, so have you done this before, Ryan? One time. Dark alley. <laughs> Yeah, 
So what's the benefit of listening to them? Feeling um, the best result. There you go. So this is like a negative thing. This is like a positive thing. This is B plus. Foot healing. I was going to put something here, but I don't remember what it was. Oh, um, so why are we... Well, okay, so why else are we reluctant to submit to our doctor's health suggestions? Oh, we're happy where we are. Yeah, exactly. I have some experience in that. It is frustrating. But if we don't submit, then, you know.
translated from a different language. Sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And I think that's, I mean, like, I was working on a, a KBM switch. We have a, a rack where we put all our hardware in and tested. And so we had a KBM switch and it was connected to the network. And I needed, I basically needed to hook up some computers so I could see it remotely. And uh, so I talked to IT and they're like, oh, well, you can get remote access into the switch. So basically I could see the, I could use my local keyboard and monitor to control the computer far away. And so he's like, I was like, I didn't know how to do that. So he helped me and we worked through the issues. But, you know, I had to, I think that's a good point. We had, I had to defer to an expert. Even though, you know, I'm all that and I think that I'm a good engineer and I should be able to look through the manual and figure it out. I just I just wasn't getting it. It was just some simple thing that I didn't get. So, Anthony, you're probably wondering why we have MMA up here. <laughs> we watch the, that's right, submission. So, you, you can go back and watch the, uh, the first part of the, the class and figure that out. But, so, we are in um, James chapter 4 today, and we'll be roughly 6 to 17 uh, verses. Um, but, so let's kind of steer it towards, you know, uh, our relationship with God. Why is it, why is it good to submit to God, and what makes it difficult? What makes it difficult is you don't want to do what you're trying to do. Just like the wrestling, right? I mean, the, they had a choice. The guy going in there, like if John was here today, I, I'd be like, okay, I submit. He'd just walk up to me, okay, I'm tapped out. Um, so that would be like willing submission. Uh, is there somebody in the Bible that had a willing submission? There you go. Pull out the Sunday school answer. That's right. Jesus willingly submitted, right? He gave up. He gave up his life. Nobody took it from him. He gave it up. Um, but, you know, what, what else? Oh, I'm sorry. I was going back to the, okay, I willingly submit to John if he came in and wanted to grapple with me. Um, but what were these guys here doing? You said it earlier, Ryan. That's right. Eventually, in some cases, we're going to submit. It's whether or not we willingly submit to it or if we're forced into it. Anybody ever been forced into submission by the Lord? Or close to it? Maybe that's kind of a negative connotation. Have, yeah? So, yeah? So what's the story behind that, Anthony? Because you guys were in Oklahoma? For work or school?
idea of, okay, I can, yeah, yeah. And then sometimes at the end, as Christians will say, oh, well, okay, pray that God blesses our plans. Wait a minute, what, what, what did we see David do all through the, the, his life? He inquired of the Lord. He was like, okay, God, should we go up to Hebron? Yes. Okay, they went up to Hebron. And then you see part of David's life where he messed up and he didn't go to the Lord and he didn't say, God, should I look at this woman off the shelf? I mean, off the roof. <laughs> I think David probably would have avoided a lot of things, a lot of problems in his life and his family if he did that. So. He did. Yeah. Do we, do we always get clear and immediate answers? There's definitely times in David's life, yeah. I don't know if it was every day, but it was certainly a highlight reel. There were times when you weren't there, so how long did it really, the scripture really talk about how long it took to get those answers? You see what I'm saying? What about Abraham? I mean, we've talked about Abraham both in Galatians and James. Did, did Abraham have to submit to God's plan? Yeah. Well, give me some backstory. So what was God's plan? Very good example. That's that's a very good example. And you know, God said, "Okay, Abraham, take your your one and only son, whom you love, take him up and sacrifice him to me." So, what do you think? What was going through Abraham's mind? That's okay. So there's uh
Um, somebody remind me of our verses today. Okay, go full screen. Oops. Okay, James chapter 4. Let's go ahead and read through this. Um, scrappers. Oh, sweet. Okay, we'll jump in and we can get a testimony on scrapping. Grapplers. Okay, somebody start and read. did our lesson today. That's awesome. I'm excited because like every one of y'all have contributed to our conversation so far and like I've done almost nothing other than offering to tap out so John can not kill me. Um, okay, we're in James chapter 4, verse 6. I'm trying to make this bigger. Is that readable to everybody? Somebody read um, 6 through 10. What we're going to do is just we'll look at the headings, we'll read through the scripture, and then I want you to come back and kind of talk about, you know, what's the benefit of submitting to God, how do we submit to God. There's a lot of really cool information in here, so we could get, like, down lots of, um, um, what's that? Rabbit holes. Yes, thank you. I think bird, bird trails. No, rabbit holes. Um, but let's, let's keep the main topic of, okay, the whole thing is talking about submission to God. So, um, somebody read 6 to 10 for us. But he gives us more grace. That is why scriptures say, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. 
to stop us right there because I know we're going to eventually get to it. Okay. Uh, 11 and 12. This is through grace. We need with submission through grace. Somebody read 11 and 12. James is the one that talked about we were supposed to be doers of the law, not just hearers only, huh? Okay. 13 to 16, through submission. Right? Yeah. Words have power. Yeah. We can either use them for good or for evil. So if you look at that, and you look at, you know, he's talking about in chapter 4, what causes fights and quarrels, you desire, you do not have, so you murder, you adulterous people, um, friendship with the world is in, enmity with God. Uh, and then he, then he comes up and he says, is it to no purpose that the scripture says, yearns jealousy over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us. So God is jealous of the Holy Spirit. He, not of the Holy Spirit, but he wants the Holy Spirit to be in control of our lives. That's basically what it's saying there. And when we don't give control, you know, there's, there's some, some jealousy there. He wants the Holy Spirit to be in control. And then verse 6 says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. He gives more grace. So before this, James is calling the people he's writing to, you know, adulterous people. Later on, he clearly t calls them sinners and, and um, other things. But how is this, but he gives more grace, how is that encouraging to those of us that want to follow the Lord? Right. So we say, hey, I messed up, God. He, I mean, I'm still trying. 
are they similar words or are they contrasting words? Yeah. So, some things I would contend that we know God wants us to do. I mean, we know that He wants us to have a tame tongue. I mean, it's very clear. That's, you know, God, should I chew out this person or should I, you know, try to encourage them? Right? Some things are very clear, and some things God doesn't have to tell us again because He's already told us in His Word. Right? I think those are, I think a lot of our answers can come from, you know, Scripture. Maybe if we're not getting a clear answer, maybe we're not listening to God in the right way. Okay. Uh, so, it, <laughs> which side, if, you, if all you read today was this sentence, God poses the proud and gives grace to the humble, what side of that are you motivated to be on? The proud side or the grace side? Why? Why do you want to be on this side? Yeah. That's right. So yeah, I mean, it'd be like so, John, when you grapple and you're you're struggling against it, and you pretty much know, okay, you know, this this opponent is opposing me, so, you know, you're going to do something different so that you're not in that position, right? So, if we realize we're opposing God, you know, or no, well, kind of, if we realize we're being proud and God opposes us, more than likely if we're smart, we should do something different, right? Does that make sense? Ryan, you look quizzical. Okay, we'll come back. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. I didn't know this, but this resist word is very much like a military word. Very much a, you know, the enemy's coming in. Um, some of you guys who have experience probably know, you know, there's certain things that you, I don't know, I call it hunker down. Um, like pick up like a defensive position. I'm struggling here. Anybody have an example of what like a defensive position would be in wars? Yeah, hold your ground. It's not. It's not talking about like attack. It's talking about you know stand firm. Put up your protections. Yeah, I think about like yeah, get ready. Like shields all around. It's like, okay, guys, let's get organized. It's, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna stand on this hill. This is the hill we're gonna die on. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Should we always resist the devil? I mean, I guess that's an obvious question. But what's an alternative to resisting the devil? Falling for temptation. Okay, so that's that's kind of the negative side of, of resisting. What about something else? What are we told to do in the face of uh, sexual temptation? Flee. Sometimes God calls us to flee. Sometimes God calls us to resist. How do you know what to do? I mean, how would you decide? Should I resist? Should I flee? There's usually a way out. Usually. It's, yeah. Sometimes I, you fall into the trap of, oh, well, if I can't beat them, then I might as well join them. You know, maybe that's, you ask yourself, you know, is this something that God wants me to do? Hang out with this crowd or be influenced by these people? I didn't know that's what yield of men.
to say we're not going to die right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a very good point. Because what does Scripture teach? Once we die here, where are we? We're with the Lord in eternity, right? So, like, now is like a, it's like practice for the, for the main event, okay? You know, God's sanctifying us, he's growing us, it's rehearsal, <laughs> teaching us things. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Okay, so, and then he goes on, cleanse your hands, and what does he call the, the readers of his sin, you sinners? What, what happened to this, like, brothers and sisters? I think, I, at least Paul frequently addressed his, his readers as, as, you know, dearly beloved brothers and sinners. Here, James takes a different tact, right? He calls them what? And? Why does he say that? I like that phrase. think, okay, we're all that, but, you know, if a pastor comes up and he preaches and he, said, he calls the congregation sinners and double-minded, one of two things is going to happen. What do you think the, one, the first option is? People get upset and people leave. What's the second thing that could happen? Right, right. It could be like, aha, the light bulb might go off. I'm a Christian, but you know, I do fall into this category of sinners and double-minded. So he has those two, um, I don't know, somebody who knows English would be a lot better at this, but he has those two objects. Or the, the, so what is, what is, what's that? Yeah, two statements. For the sinners, what does James tell them to do? your hands. What does that what does that mean to like a Jewish reader first and then we'll get to what it means to today. What were the, what was um, like before the priest was allowed to go into the Holy of Holies? Right. Kind of cleansing does that if you get a bath does that cleanse your insides? No, but it cleanses your outsides. Well, I, I went to Israel one time and uh, went to the Wailing Wall. And obviously I'm a Gentile. So I go up, I, but I wanted to go up to the wall. And so they had um, temporary, uh, uh, yeah, things to put on. So I took that and, and I saw like older men, obviously Jewish, coming up. And there's like a fountain. And they would come in and they would take the label and they'd wash their hands. Symbolic of cleansing, right? Symbolic of, okay, I'm cleansing myself from the sin. That's what he tells the sinners to do. If you don't like being called a sinner, cleanse your hands. Double-minded? Probably similarly, purify your hearts. It's a cleansing, right? That's speaking of like an inward thing. <laughs> Uh-huh. And so he's saying, when you clean the outside, they're also clean the inside. Yeah. Yeah. How do we... 
so we won't know what to expect. I know my wife. I know my wife's personality. So when she's like cooking, that is not the time for me to come in and have like a deep conversation about, you know, what should the kids do in their future and whatnot. Why? It's because she's focused on that. And I know that, um, uh, what was it? Oh, so Bella came in town. And so Mindy was trying to cook and get everything ready for Thanksgiving banquet and all that sort of thing. And I started cleaning. And then I went to go get a shower. And, and I was watching a movie on Netflix. That did not go over well. And so I knew when, when Mindy kindly asked me, can you do some cleaning? <laughs> I knew to respond because I was in the wrong. I should have known that. That's what she really wanted me to do. But it's, we have to know God's personality. How do we know God's personality? Do we go to the internet? Do we go to YouTube? Do we watch Oprah? How do we know God's personality? Draw near to God. So if you had, so if you were talking to a brand new believer, how would you explain drawing near to God? My best friend in high school, so I moved to Banks just like half an hour from here when I was in fifth grade. And so, I don't know why, um, but like, there's this kid that was, I don't, I don't know, for some reason, it was, I just knew he was going to be my friend. So I was like, okay, how do I be his friend? I just follow him around everywhere. Now, he probably thought he was crazy and some like really weird kid from the East Coast, which I was, but you know, I still communicate with that guy. Zach Mitchell from uh, Banks High School. You know, his son plays lacrosse, talk to him all the time. Well, okay, during lacrosse tournaments. Um, but yeah, that's a great example. We just spend time with somebody we want to be friends with. We don't just like... Well, it has to be quality time, too. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to spend five minutes telling you about everything I want. Right, right. And we kind of look at, you know, we should want to be pleasing to the Lord. If you look at what he did for us, I mean, it's, I mean, he did just a little bit for us, right? He gave up his one and only son, right? He gave himself for us. So we should, I mean, we can't outgive God. I mean, there was a testimony once I heard about uh, tithing. And it was the, uh, the guy had become saved. And so he, he just recently, and so somebody was talking to him about tithing and tithing and all this, and the guy was like, he didn't say dude, but he said, <laughs> he said, why would I not do that? Jesus gave everything for me so I can have eternal life, and all he asks is for 10%. It's like, okay, yeah, here. I mean, that's the balance that sometimes we lose sight of, that, you know, God did everything for us. The reason we're still alive today is because he allowed us to breathe, breathe his breath and get up. Um, but he, he goes on. And he says, oh, oh, be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourself before the Lord. And what? And he will exalt you. What's the opposite of being humble? We had two words earlier that we looked at. Proud. Yeah. If I have a choice between being proud and being opposed by God, or if I have the choice of being humble before the Lord, then what should I choose? I should be humble. How do we do that? What does he say? Wretched, mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Why? Is he saying we shouldn't ever be happy? What's James saying? 
right? That's what he's talking about. He's saying, recognize that here's Almighty God and how you've fallen short. We should mourn and weep. We should uh, not be laughing about sin. We're going to turn our mourning and your joy, uh, let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. In order to truly cleanse and purify, it, you have to do that. You have to acknowledge what is being done. You have to, to, to change it. You can't change something you're not acknowledging. Right. I mean, this is like, I, I don't know. Sometimes I think of a family member that, um, yeah, I'm, I'm good with God. We're, we're good with God. God's leading me to move or to do something like that. But this person doesn't is not spending time in God's Word, not attending church, not putting themselves under Christian leadership. How do you know who who's leading you? I mean, is the devil looking to kind of masquerade himself as as God? Does the devil put, potentially, uh, put, uh, you know, a, a Jeep Wrangler for sale on Craigslist for 1800 bucks? And, no, this has got to be the Lord. My truck's in the shop, and the Lord's obviously pulling up, showing, leading me to buy this, this uh, Jeep Wrangler. I don't know, maybe, but you're not going to know if you're not paying attention to the Lord. So are we getting closer to how we can get clear answers? Okay. So we're getting closer to that. I think we talked about, you know, some, um, what we should do in order to hear those clear answers. And I think it's practice, too. I think we got to start with, okay, I'm going to submit to God's authority in what he's explicitly clear on. You know, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to lie, I'm not going to look with lust, and all these other things. There's lots of things that we don't do that Scripture says we should do. So I think we start there. We build that relationship with the Lord, and that takes effort on our part, right? If I'm going to, like, go into grappling, then, like, I better apply some effort to that. And practice, too. You know, I don't want to meet John up in a dark alley and have him say, hey, you want to grapple? I mean, hopefully he wouldn't say that. <laughs> what am I doing in the dark alleys? What, what are both of us there? <laughs> we need some Christian brothers to come and say, John, Tori, get, get out of the, come to the light, come to the light. Um, <laughs> we have a Christian fight club. Clear answers. So I think we, can, we have clear answers. I think we're getting some motivation about how to act with submission. This is, this is really, it touches on some of the issues that they were having. Somebody refresh our memory of 11 and 12. All right, let's go 11, just 11. on, there's only one lawgiver and judge, he who is able to save and destroy, who's he talking about? Is Jesus able to save and destroy? Is God in control? He has full right. I had a poster once, I wanted to, I, I, I lost it before I had a chance to put it up on my cue ball, but it said, uh, Jesus has the right to tell you what to do. Do we ever fall into that category? Yeah. 
um, what does he say? So, in, so like you're saying, the big thing that James is harping on, on is, you know, what we should say, if the Lord wills, we do this and that. Now, I once had a, a friend of mine, that, like, I'd say, hey, are you going to be able to come to the life and teacher training tonight? And he'd say, oh, Lord willing. I'd be like, well, I'm pretty sure he would be willing for you to come to this training, but okay. Um, is that what James is wanting us to do? Oh, okay, Lord willing. I think he's wanting us to be flexible. Because God's plan, we may think we know God's plan is, but a lot of times he starts us on down one direction so that we'll be open to see a different direction that we don't even have on our radar. Yeah. And he just wants us to be open and flexible for that guidance. Not to say, not, not that he doesn't want us, he says he wants us to prosper. It's the, the whole thing of us being flexible and open to, okay, where are you going to take me? Where right. do I need to go? Right. So, kind of, yeah. 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 Whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Are there situations in our life where we know the right thing to do? Do we have to ask God, okay, should I help this old lady across the street? Should I warn this elderly man walking around the track at the lacrosse tournament that those balls hurt when they hit you? I did do that yesterday because and this old guy, World War II veteran, had hiking sticks. I use hiking sticks too. But he has on the hiking sticks, and so I'm walking by with my camera taking pictures. And I try to get his attention. I was like, hey, hey uh, can I... Uh, how you doing? And so he had hearing aids, so he didn't hear me. And so I got a little bit closer, and, and I didn't, I, I was going to, like, tap him just to get his attention. And I, I felt bad because, like, he, he was like, oh, what's going on? And so he was very shaky. I startled him because he couldn't hear me. But I had to tell him that, you know, hey, there's balls going everywhere. I mean, I've been hit by one before. And so whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do it, for him it is sin. Is the problem in our lives that we don't know what God wants us to do? Like for specific situations, we, we might be able to say that. But, what did it say earlier? Draw, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Because we get closer and closer to God through submission, through understanding, through study of his word, that helps us get to know his personality. How can, how can we be friends with somebody if we don't know their personality? Well, how, what's the most clear way we can know God's personality? I mean, it's given to us right here and here, and somebody who probably even has a paper Bible in here. Yeah, yeah, he's got paper, right? It's on here. We can't have that excuse that we don't know what God wants us to do, by and large. We've got to start with the big stuff. And we've got to make clear the, the little stuff. So I think we've got some motivation here. I think we've got some understanding that, okay, there's a lot of things God has told us to do that we need to actually do or start doing. And we need to draw near to God. He'll draw near to us. And it's amazing how um, we still have time left. Oh, it's just, right. I was going to say, it's amazing how when you draw near to God, it's almost like, it's almost, it, it, there are definitely occurrences in my life and others where, okay, yeah, I know this is what God wants me to do. It's because I'm in relationship with Him. I'm asking Him, okay, should I do this? And there's sometimes He gives us the option to choose between two good things. Sometimes that's our answer. Sometimes God gives us the freedom to choose between two good things. But we need to inquire of Him. We need to inquire of Him. We need to spend time with Him. We need to know what He's all about. We need to be in His words so we can learn His personality. It's all good stuff. Thoughts? Did your question get answered? Well, I was talking to your answers about you know, what to do and 
how do we how do we get there to where um That's a very good point.
Um, I think the life group director might come in here and start getting after us for taking so long. So why don't we close with a word of prayer and uh, we'll head out. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this study. And Lord, thank you for, Lord, just every single person in here today that's contributed to the conversation. And Lord, everyone has. Um, I pray that you would just use, use us to... Um, encourage each other and to, you know, be the shoulder to lean on, help us to be um, the people that that um, encourage others to come closer to you. Uh, when somebody asks for advice, Lord, let's help us to be the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, let's, let's pray about this together now. And then let's Let's try to figure things out with your help. Lord, help us to do that, not just think it. Lord, help us to do it. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Cool. Thank you, guys. John, that was a perfect analogy. You, you did 